Hey friends, Tony here from Teal Yarn Crafts and today we're practicing Tunisian Crochet Stranded Color Work. Stranded Color Work is a way to make multicolored patterns using two or more colors of yarn in the same row. As colors change, the yarn not in use is carried or floated along the back of the work. If you're excited to learn this Tunisian crochet technique with me, be sure to like this video and consider subscribing to my channel for even more crochet tutorials, free patterns, and product reviews. So we're starting with this chart here that I just made of my initials, something quick and easy. I've got 20 squares along the bottom here, which means I'll have 20 stitches total for my sample. And I've got 14 squares which means I'll have 14 total rows for my project. So my main color is gonna be this gray. So all of the white squares will be worked in gray. And then my accent color is gonna be this cream. So all of my black squares are gonna be worked in cream. So I can see here that I've got two rows that are all worked in gray. So I've got my foundation row and my second row which are just 20 stitches of Tunisian Simple Stitch. So if I set that aside, I'll grab my work, starting with a slip knot on my hook, I'm going to chain 20. So yarn over, pull through. And I'm gonna work this up as if you know a little something about Tunisian crochet. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. If you're brand new to Tunisian crochet, there's a video popping up in the top right hand corner right now. You can click on that video and get some practice in. So I'm gonna flip my chain over, find my back bumps, and pull up a loop in each of those bumps. All right, and now I wanna work my return pass, which starts with a chain one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, until there's just one loop left on my hook. All right, so that's my first row. So if we look at our chart, we've got, we're working from the bottom up, working from right to left, so this is my first row. My second row is all white boxes, so it's all gray stitches. So I've got one more row of Tunisian Simple Stitch. Remember that this first loop on the hook counts as our first stitch. So we skip this first vertical bar and we're gonna go into the next vertical bar, insert our hook, yarn over and pull up a loop and leave that loop on our hook. We're gonna do that for each stitch across. Insert, yarn over, pull up a loop. Insert, yarn over, pull up a loop. So here on our last stitch, I'm gonna get a little closer. If we flip our work towards us, we can see that there is a front loop and a back loop to our last stitch. Make sure you insert your hook under both of those loops to keep nice clean edges on the left hand side of your work. So that's our last stitch. We're going to do our return pass, starting with a chain one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and we'll do that until there's one loop left on our hook. All right, so we've got our first two rows complete. So our first row, which was our foundation, and our second row is complete, all in gray. So if we look at our chart and look at row three, starting from the right, we have one, two stitches in gray, and then one, two, three, four, five, six stitches in cream. So we've got our first loop on our hook counts as our first stitch. So we're gonna skip this first vertical bar. We're gonna insert our hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. So there are our two gray stitches. Now we wanna move on to our cream stitches. So I'm gonna insert my hook into the next stitch, grab my cream yarn, 
So I just drop the gray still attached to my work, grab my cream yarn, leaving a nice long tail. I'm gonna yarn over my hook and pull up a loop. So that's my first cream stitch. I'm gonna pull up two more loops. So that's three out of my six. And now I'm gonna do what's called locking the float. To maintain really good tension in our work, we don't wanna do too many stitches in our accent color because then we'll need to pull our main color across. But if our tension gets weird with carrying that gray color, it can impact the look of our finished project. So in my opinion, when you're first starting out, I like to lock my floats every three stitches. So all we have to do is bring the gray over the cream and then drop it to the back of the work again. And now we're gonna finish our three stitches in cream. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. We had one, two, three, four, five, six stitches in cream. Now we have one, two, three, four, five stitches in gray. I'm gonna drop my cream and to help myself, I'm gonna try and bring this gray color up so it untangles. So I'm gonna bring it under my cream yarn here. I'm gonna work three of those five stitches. There's two and three. Lock my float again. So just bringing the gray over the cream, bringing the gray back up, and finish those last two stitches in gray. There's one and two. So I've got my one, two, three, four, five stitches in gray. Now I'm gonna bring my cream yarn over because I've got two stitches of cream, one and two. And then I'm gonna go back to gray because my last one, two, three, four, five stitches are in gray. So just drop the cream to the back of my work and work one, two, three, four, five, making sure I grab both loops of that last stitch and pull up the loop. So now we're ready for the return pass. We're gonna start with the chain one and yarn over and pull through two until we get one loop left of our main color. So it's yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So we've got one loop of our main color left. I'm gonna drop my gray, grab my cream, yarn over, and again, pull through two until I have one loop of cream. Drop my cream, and I'm gonna grab my gray, yarn over, and I'm going to yarn over, pull through two, through two, and through two. Now I've worked off three stitches of gray, just like on the forward pass, I wanna lock this float so I don't have any uh, tension issues. So I just brought the cream over the gray. Yarning over, pull through two and through two. I've got one loop of gray left. Gonna drop the gray, grab the cream, yarn over, pull through two, through two, and through two. Now I wanna lock this float so I'm just gonna bring the cream over and then under the gray. Yarn over and complete pulling through two with the cream until I have one strand of cream. I can now grab my gray, yarn over, pull through two and through two. So if I can see on the front of my work, I have my nice clean stitches. On the back of my work, I have my floats, including my locked floats and that's row three. So now if we look at row four, one, two, three, four, we've got two stitches of gray, two of cream, two of gray, two of cream, and so on. Remember this first loop on your hook counts as your first stitch, so we're gonna simple stitch the next stitch. Now we've got two stitches of cream. Since our color changes are right on top of each other, it's a good idea to lock your yarns at this point. And that'll prevent any holes in between your stitches, which can happen in Tunisian crochet. So I'm gonna go into my next cream stitch. There's one 
into. Now I need to go back to gray. It's not a color change in the same space, so I'm just gonna grab my gray yarn and I've got two stitches of gray. And then I have two stitches of cream, so I'm gonna go one and two. Now I've got two stitches of gray in the same space, so I'm going to lock my yarn. I'm going to bring my cream over my gray, bringing my gray under my cream. So I've got one, two, three, gonna lock my float, so bringing my gray under my cream. Then I've got four and five. Since I'm switching back to cream in the same spot, I'm gonna bring the cream under the gray to lock in that color change. Do one and two. I've got a color change right on top of itself again. I'm gonna bring my cream under my gray and finish up gray here with one, two, three, four, and five. Looking at the back again, I've got my nice clean floats, nice even, nice and even along the back of my work with my locked floats at my color changes where appropriate. So we're always locking when we're doing a color change right on top of itself. And we're locking again if we're doing more than three stitches in a row. So yes, if you're wondering, there is a possibility for your yarn to get a bit tangled here, but just continuing to lock in opposite directions should help manage the tangles. Just keep an eye on your yarn. So now we're gonna do the return pass. Chain one, yarn over, pull through two, 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 and two until I've got one strand of that accent color. I'm going to bring my cream yarn under the gray, yarn over, pull through two and two. Gonna switch back to gray, so I'm gonna bring gray under cream. I'm gonna do one, two, three. Going to lock that float. One, two. I've got one strand of, of gray left, so I'm gonna bring up the cream. One strand of cream, so I'm gonna bring up the gray. One strand of gray, let's bring up the cream. One strand of cream, going back to gray. So we can see our stitches starting to emerge. This is the bottom of our L. This is the long leg, short leg. We've got the long leg of the T coming. So I'll keep working up my sample. Join me back here and I'll show you how we'll finish things off. So that finishes off all the yarn that I need in cream. So I'm going to leave a nice long tail and just fasten that off because I don't need it anymore. And I'm going to do my last two rows in this Tunisian simple stitch. So just pulling up a loop in each stitch across. And at this point I can do whatever bind off that I'm planning to do. As you can see, I've clearly got this letters, these letters that I was trying to achieve from my chart. So just like any swatch of Tunisian crochet, this can definitely stand to be blocked. And that will help even out the sides here and also 
completely get rid of this curling that's happening. So this is the front side of our work. On the back side of our work, you can see here in these stitches, I made my floats a little bit longer. As you get more comfortable with stranded color work, you could probably go up to five or even six stitches without having to lock your floats if you can maintain that really good tension. This video was made as a supplement to the home square as part of the Tunisian holiday sampler blanket. To get the row by row instructions for the home square and learn more about this sampler afghan, visit the link in the description.